So just to get started, we're going to be talking about just the different routes to contribution. I understand that many of you have been sort of very, very high contact with Mozilla projects for a long time. And it seemed a little bit silly to be like, hi, it's my second day, let me tell you your business. <laughs> so this is just going to be like very 101. Uh, for those of you who are experts, we'll have a little bit at the end about getting the most out of your contributions. Um, so let's see how that works. Uh, just to go ahead and recap, my name is Jessica Rose. It is my second day, and I'm having a very weird first week at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Usually I have a little bit of time to be like, what, what's that term we're using? Yeah, oh, God. And no, this time I'm just going to fake it live on stage and um, let you all know when I don't know something. Uh, because this is going to be a really 101 level talk, it might not be immediately applicable to everybody who's been sort of a super expert, folks who have been around for a long time. Uh, for the folks who are just the best of the best and great at everything, can you look very Raising your hand is a bit bold. Can you look smug? <laughs> or, or laugh aloud. <laughs> For those of you who, who may not get as much value out of a 101 level talk, I've added a bribe at the end. <laughs> so this is my second day at Mozilla, we're getting to know each other. The most interesting thing about me is I have very ugly cats. Uh, and everybody's like, no, your cats aren't ugly. If you make it to the end of the talk, you'll be like, wow, those are terrible. And I'm going to make it very, very 101 level. Uh, and this might be really, really great for those of you who haven't had a lot of contact with Mozilla or you're just looking to get involved. And really the reason I joined Mozilla is about what we're doing, what we're trying to do. And this is, I know mission statements are always terrible as a concept, not this one. Uh, please continue to pay me. But it's really, really challenging to look at a mission statement and say, wow, I really believe in that. But for Mozilla, I really believe in that. I, and I know it sounds very earnest in American accent, very like, yay, team. <laughs> uh, but this is something that it's not too hard to get behind, building a better internet, and then drilling down a little bit further to say, do you know what? And this, in the age of owning everything, seems so bold, saying, to have the internet as a public resource, that's really, really fantastic, that it should be available to everyone, that puts people first, that the individuals shape their own internet, is, yeah, pretty exciting, but also, wow, a pretty tall order. So how that actually happens, some of us get to work at Mozilla full time and it's fantastic, but there's not actually that many of us all together. The way Mozilla's historically been able to do this, and hopefully the way that it's going to continue to work in the future, is having quite a bit of time, and actually now that's like 20 years, two months, and three weeks. Nobody Google that. <laughs> but thousands of volunteers and contributors, just people all around the world doing small and big things. And unfortunately, when I say countless, I mean countless. Being able to count the code contributions or the, the changes people have made to documentation or translations, that's something we can sit down and crunch the numbers on. But every time somebody's helped out at an event or every time somebody's taught something new or every time somebody's shared knowledge, is really almost impossible to count. So I really marvel at the idea of contributions so numerous that we're unable to really grasp them. And we're going to look at a bunch of different avenues for contributing based on the kind of person you are, the kind of stuff you like to do, and the kind of stuff that you will not do no matter what and no one can make you. Who here absolutely loves people? <laughs> Uh, for those of you watching on the video, we had a fantastic mixed response where some people were like, yeah! And, uh, I'm not going to point where, but some just like, no. <laughs> like, visibly, no. If you love people and you want to be around people and this is your whole thing, there are a ton of fantastic ways to get involved with the Mozilla community or with contributing in person. Unfortunately, this next slide is very, very localized and makes a lot less sense in English. So I'm going to over-explain it and make sure it's not funny. So, in English, when you say someone's a ham, it's pretty much this. It's like, oh, I love attention and being on stage. What would that be in French? Is there a term for that? <laughs> like, we, don't, we don't have that in French. Like, <laughs> to the general consensus, is like, oh, God, no, why would anybody want that? If you are a ham, if you love attention, if you're not shy, 
Or if you want to be less shy, coming out to an event, coming at a big scary conference like Fostum, or coming to a smaller local meetup to share knowledge, to share stuff you've worked on or share stuff you care about, can be a really fantastic sort of high energy intensive way to share that knowledge and get involved with the community. Sharing your experiences through speaking can be absolutely terrifying, uh, but there is a most, oh hey, how can I help you? Uh, one more time? It's probably a best to send in French. Sorry. Can somebody else confirm that I'm not going to be swearing if I say that? State beast. <laughs> <laughs> Literally a state beast. A state... I've never wanted a tattoo before, but like... Yeah. <laughs> um, Mozilla actually has a program if you're interested in getting into public speaking and getting into a little bit of support and seeing how we can help you with this. And that's a tech speakers program. So the applications and the process for that for 2019 is just closed, but that's going to come back in 2020. And that involves a lot of help with speaker training, a lot of help with uh, travel and logistics, and just a really great community to learn from. Uh, I will warn that they, they weave, weave, I work here now. <laughs> I actually work on this program too, so there's no excuse. Um, We've uh, had a whole lot of really exciting applicants around that, so it's been really, really challenging to make the choice around that. Still, please apply. We'll just send you a really polite response if we run out of space. The most polite response, with a picture of a ham. <laughs> and you say, yes, 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 because we're on a first name basis. And you say, why do I want to speak? And I say, well, because it's cool. If you're speaking here in Europe, the, the convention, I, I live in Europe too. Well. I live in the UK. I live in Europe for <laughs> two more months. And then you all push us into the sea. Oh, they don't let me vote. They don't let me vote. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't get to do Brexit jokes at home, so this is... No, it, luckily this isn't being videotaped or streamed, and everything is fine. And you might say, why do I want to get into public speaking? The first thing is, generally, I found the convention in Europe is that no matter how bad you do, people have to come up afterwards, and the only thing they're allowed to say is like, oh yeah, that went really well, good job. They can't say mean things. Your experiences may vary. Uh, <laughs> but everybody's very polite. People want you to succeed. Um, the worst thing people are going to say is like, oh, good talk. The worst thing people are going to say is, this isn't a question, it's more of a comment. But that's a different thing. But speaking at... Lo <laughs> I love how like the one public speaker there was like, yes! <laughs> uh, it's also a really fantastic way to grow your profile. Not only do people clap and tell you you did a good job, uh, but you get your name out there. It'd be really fantastic for networking, which is a scary word, uh, or meeting people and really establishing your expertise. But because we're on a first name basis, you might say, Jess, no, I hate that. I'm not a stage beast. Please don't make me. And that's cool. You still like, you like people. You want to be doing stuff with other people and you do not want to get on stage. We got this. You're probably, and this is another weird English idiom, you're probably a mastermind. Somebody ready to put together the big picture and do a lot of planning. Is there a French word for that? Oh, are we on the French side of Brussels? I'm going to stop asking for localizations. <laughs> Unless someone speaks Flemish, then I've got a lot of questions. It's a cool language. You don't want to speak, but you do want to be involved in events, either just participating, just being part of the community, either coming to see a talk and laughing politely, or helping out, or helping work the booth, um, or volunteering for them. You say, well, I don't know what events are out there. You have no excuse, here's a link. Or, you can search for Mozilla events, what are they, please. And if you do want to be out there, and if you do want to be out at events, but you want it to be a little bit more official, you say, well, I'd really like a little bit of credit for this. I'm really great. If you want to be, I don't know, an official representative, maybe re represent Mozilla throughout the community, in person and online, there's a Mozilla reps program. Um, and it's a really, really fantastic way to be sort of a designated person who exists out in the community doing cool Mozilla stuff. If you're doing great stuff, always try and get credit for it. You say, yes, 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 that's great. I've come to Fostum or I'm streaming this because actually I don't want to be around people all the time. What have you got for me? 
code. <laughs> no, we, we got a lot of non, non-human interaction options. You still have to interact with people, but they're filtered through that, that wonderful, wonderful invention of the internet. You say, do you know what? I just want to contribute some code. I just want to build a little bit of stuff. I want to work on this thing. Uh, and I want to see your best stock photo of a hacker. Uh, which I thought was fantastic. For those of you who can't see it, it literally says, file, cliche hacker and binary code. Uh, is anybody currently contributing code to Mozilla projects? Look at y'all. I am not. <laughs> I, it, it's day two. Cut me some slack. If you aren't, and there are a lot of people who aren't, and you want to try it out, this is a fantastic way to sort of flex, learn some things, get, get some experience, and you can just start here. This is pretty easy to maintain, remember? And again, search exists. Be like, how do I... Can... I'm not going to walk you through how to search. But coming around, you say, yes, we've been through a couple options yet. I... People are okay. I can't do too many of them. I don't really want to do a lot of code stuff. I... I'm inherently artistic. I'm a design maven. I have some great things I want to do. I say, that's fantastic. How about we just give you an open design community to do cool, weird design stuff with? It's easy enough. There's not a lot of uptake in the audience. It's like, yeah, design. OK. <laughs> if you are super interested in design or you're just a little bit too shy, come see me after class. I used to be a teacher, so I'm, I'm loving the layout. <laughs> uh, for those of you watching at home, we're actually in a classroom, not, not being very, very strange. And you say, yes, I am incredibly passionate about documentation. And if that's true, <laughs> that, that. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're, no, like, <laughs> Uh, for those of you who, who I didn't break by saying I really love documentation, um, I should point out that documentation makes everything work. Wait, who reads the documentation when they get started? I have answered a lot of support questions in my day, so some of you are lying. <laughs> but we're still cool. <laughs> documentation makes everything work. Contributing to documentation I genuinely believe is one of the like, farthest reaching things you can do with your time if you've got time to contribute. And you say, wow, I'm not sold. I'd be like, okay. What if you, you don't have to do it? You probably should. <laughs> but just check out what's going on at MDN. What contributing might mean, what they do. Even if you don't want to do it, spend two or three minutes just glancing at the page and then just appreciate the heck out of uh, the folks who do do it. You say, well, Jess, because we're having a, na- a conversation where you say my name a lot, which gets a little bit creepy. I mostly want to write code. Uh, uh, but I'm also gloriously multilingual. I could example tell you how to say uh, stage beast in French, which I've completely blanked. <laughs> I'd really like to be able to make sure that either the documentation that's so incredibly precious or the products themselves that live out there are available in my language. And in this hypothetical conversation, I say, wow, you are incredibly good. If you did want to contribute to translation and localization, this is a fantastic way to make sure everybody out there can access things. When we talk about the internet as sort of a public resource, when we talk about the individual value of being able to make the web work for you, it's not about the web is a public resource for those who speak English. It's really about anybody out there who needs to be able to access it. So if you speak multiple... Who here is from like, Europe proper? Y'all speak like four languages. <laughs> They're like, no, no, six. <laughs> uh, and especially if you speak a language that... Uh, speak in like a language that isn't as common in the documentation that exists out there. Just spend... I know people love to argue on the internet. I'm an old lady. I've seen some stuff. If you want to argue about translations, do it, do it nicely. You say, OK, that's a bunch of different stuff. That's great. What if I just want to see everything? What if I don't want to have 
a really, really abstract artificial conversation where you walk me through all the options. I think that that says mozilla.com slash contribute. Is that true? That's fine. <laughs> uh, it's my second day and I have been told you can't get fired in your first week as official. No, that's, that's, that's totally true. <laughs> So yeah, there is so much more. I've only really touched on the top level of everything's going on. Say, so, hey, you can do stuff in person. You can do stuff with code. You can do stuff with design. There are an incredible number of projects. Are you really, really excited ab about augmented reality? Are you really excited about Webpack? Are you really excited about, we determined that many of us were not super excited about documentation, but I am so happy to meet you in the cafeteria and like politely argue this out. <laughs> all of it's here, and it's all here in like glorious detail. And there's a little bit more, so it's not just, hi, please come do this work. There's also an incredible amount of just campaigns. Uh, so those of us who will remain in Europe, um, not jealous, uh, but there's a lot of really, really strong net, tr net neutrality things going on out here. Uh, and there's a lot of really, really challenging things that have been going on back and forth in other markets. Being able to take a look at what kinds of campaigns exist, what kinds of sort of quick wins there are in activism or quick wins in projects. This is a really, really fantastic resource to say what's going on near you and what kinds of Mozilla projects or programs might be able to help you support what you're already doing. But in this hypothetical conversation we're having, you say, Jess, I, um, I knew that. Thank you very much, because you have to be polite to speakers. You say, thank you, good talk. I already knew all of this. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to get a little bit more out of con contributing. So who, right, you can, you can either raise your hand or look very pleased with yourself. Uh, who here currently contributes to Mozilla in any way? So keep it up if you have that on your CV or resume. Okay, that was weird, because you're like, I don't contribute, but it's on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, that was very mean. <laughs> like, good call. <laughs> um, please, 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 if you are contributing, and I don't, not that I don't care if you contribute code, I do. Um, <laughs> help. Um, but if you're contributing things at events, if you're helping manage things, if you're working on design, if you're working on organizational stuff, please list that. Um, make sure that you're tailoring your CV to the stuff you really care about, and make sure that you're getting the credit for stuff you need. Networking sounds very business-like, and it sounds terrible. Like, oh, hi, Miss Business. Oh, hi, Mr. Business. Would you like to do a business? I have no idea how adults do things. I, um, um, but networking isn't all about like, oh, good day, Mr. Business. I don't, I hope not. Um, and be, being able to get in touch with people either on or offline and work on projects you genuinely care about is something that's really valuable. And choosing to contribute is especially interesting because you get to choose. Who here is absolutely, oh, who here is with their manager? Don't, don't, like, just say, yeah. <laughs> Who here is absolutely delighted with the way their work handles their professional development? They give you everything you need to progress just in your interests. Oh. <laughs> Usually I get like a low, no, oh, but like Mozilla Dev Room. Um, you, it's your choice what you contribute and what you do. You can focus on the skills you want to learn, the stuff you want to see in your CV, and you can focus on stuff that aligns with projects your friends are working on, or your heroes are working on, or like that person you'd really want to work with is working on. I want to take just a little tiny detour, because so far we've been saying, hey, contributing is fantastic, and here are the ways you can do it. And that's not going to change. That's going to remain the message. But contributing isn't always something that's easy for everyone. So if you're in a position right now where you can't contribute to projects, that is completely OK. Keep in mind that when you talk about contributing, when you talk about volunteering, you're talking about working effectively for free, working for something you love. And that's something that's not cost neutral for everybody. 
If you're someone that has, if you're a single parent, if you have small children, if you have a toxic job, if you have a lot to do right now, if you're on vacation, <laughs> are you on vacation? <laughs> Sorry, somebody was giggling. I was, also see me after class, I'm gonna fuss at you to take vacations with no conferences. <laughs> Not everybody is in a position where they can contribute right now, or they can contribute at all, and that's fine. It's okay to contrib not contribute. You don't have to contribute to be part of the technical community. You don't have to contribute to be part of the Mozilla community. But the responsibility for those of us in the community to lower barriers wherever possible is so important. To say, wow, how can we make it, how can we make it easier for people to contribute in these ways? How can we lower barriers? How can we make this less stressful? And talking to folks who are really interested in the mission, and I'm not sure, I'm sure there must be someone out there who isn't interested in the mission of a free, open, personally accessible internet. Um, but I don't think I've met them yet. And I, I'd like to think they'd phrase that differently. If you're talking to folks who aren't able to contribute, I'd ask that you remember why Mozilla exists and why we're here and why we're aiming to make the community so open. It's the very same mission statement, but these are the things I think are the most important around contributions. We're talking about making the internet a public resource that's open and accessible to everyone. We're individuals, not individuals that have time to contribute, not individuals that have the technical skills or the documentation skills or the design skills to shape these products, but everyone out there is able to access the web that's best for them. To recap, I'd really like to talk about how if you get nothing out, if you've been dozing this whole time, you're fantastic at sleeping through noise. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to hear your secrets. Contributing and volunteering is something you can do around your needs if your needs have the flexibility. It's something that I'd love to not see anybody burning themselves out over. I'd love to see it done in healthy ways. But if you can contribute, you can contribute in ways that suit you best. And it is something that should, and I think it is something that can, have tangible value to you, both professional experience, learning experiences, and a really great opportunity to network without saying like, oh, I'd like to do a business. And it's something that isn't necessarily available to everyone right now. And our jobs as the folks who are contributing in different ways are to lower those barriers and to continue to build for the folks who aren't building alongside us yet. Thank you so much. The hard part is now you have to like pretend to make a face like this is cute. <laughs> really? Because like, <laughs> wow, nobody's ever gone no out loud before. <laughs> Uh, and if you do want to, I'd love feedback. I'd love, if anybody wants like, good talk, uh, <laughs> these are places you can find me on the internet. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jessica. I was wondering if any of you has any questions. Because we do have like two, three minutes for that. If not, yes, you can always reach uh, Jessica, especially on Twitter. I know she's active there, so <laughs> I didn't stalk her yet on other channels. Okay, good then. Thank Thanks you so much. much.